that that's great. Okay, so. Let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. Cool. All right, guys. So uh, thank you all for taking all the time and uh, joining this uh, bootcamp. Uh, as uh, as in the beginning, I have said, this bootcamp is uh, aimed or, or targeted to use uh, for the next generation firewalls. Uh, before we jump into firewalls, there are a uh, few uh, prerequisites or there are a few basic things that we need to understand, right? As as we progress, uh, we'll, we'll discuss on what uh, these things are or, or you know, how, uh, you know, what a firewall is, uh, the basics of the firewall and uh, how uh, you know you can go ahead and uh, uh, configure the firewall, uh, configure D one of the firewall, and have uh, you know configure the access and all those things, right? So uh, I'll, I'll quickly go ahead and discuss about the agenda uh, uh, and uh, you know what are topics we are going to cover and uh, the things about that. So before we jump in, uh, let me give you a brief introduction about myself. My name is Amol Palde. I have close to four years of experience in network security, and all my experience has been with Palo Alto Network so far, right? So I I, uh, I assist the customers with, uh, you know, their requirements with deployment, with initial configurations, or with, uh, you know, maybe end, uh, even end -end project at times, right? Uh, so, let me bring the contents in a minute behind this. So, uh, the contents of this talk, uh, this bootcamp is going to be these are the topics that we are going to cover in this bootcamp. This bootcamp is aimed towards uh, to cover the basics, right? We are just targeting the audience wherein we are giving them an introduction so that they become familiar with what firewalls are, uh, what network security is, if they would like to take up their career in network security, what path they can take up and how they can progress through their career, right? So you can see this as a, a stepping stone where you get uh, a, you know, you get to know the network security components, uh, how things play along, and and uh, the role of uh, firewall in an environment, right? These kind of things. Uh, before I pro proceed with the introduction and and you know the agenda for the day and and these topics, there are certain things that I'd, I'd like to let you guys know that uh, in order to understand network security, there is a prerequisite that we expect you guys to have a brief understanding of what network is, okay? Because if we do not understand what network is, it will be very difficult for you to understand what network security is. Even though we have not put any restrictions on people uh, to join this call uh, or these sessions, this bootcamp, right? If you feel overwhelmed, please uh, do not panic that you know, you're not able to understand the concept. We'll try our best to simplify the concept or, or you know, because these, these, these are just introductions, right? So we'll try our best to simplify it for you so that you can at least get to know the introduction. And uh, once you are worse with your network part, you can come back and, you know, uh, have your hands dirty with the next generation firewall, okay? Uh, so yeah, network is one of the prerequisites if you, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, I, we have a huge audience over here. So I'm pretty sure most of you guys might be familiar with what firewalls are, right? Or my, some of you might have already worked on firewalls as well. Now, uh, let me set the expectations over here as well. So we are going to go with, uh, you know, the basics over here. Uh, this is, uh, as I said in the beginning, this is targeted towards the audience which are new to the concept of data security, right? So we are not going to do a deep dive or something, but we are going to introduce firewalls. We are going to talk about how the GUI looks, how the configuration, what rules are, or what a zone-based firewall is actually, okay? And then we are, we are going to look through these uh, topics and, and, you know, cover them 
one by one. Uh, this training uh, would be a series of whiteboard discussions, whiteboard explanations, and a lab access, right? So uh, as, when you joined or when you enrolled for this uh, boot camp, you will be provided an access to a lab uh, for 100 hours. You can go ahead and you know uh, do the labs on your own. During this session, as this bootcamp progresses, I'll be explaining you the concept. I'll be doing the labs. Uh, I'll be demonstrating it to you. And after the sessions, you are free to you know access the uh, the labs on your own, and you can go ahead and practice those. Okay. However, uh, we will discuss about the labs, how the interface looks like, and how you can access those labs towards the end of this day, right? And because this is day one, I'm not gonna take, uh, you know, I'm not gonna introduce too many concepts over here. And I, I really don't want to overwhelm the guys who are really new and, and you know, put them through too many concepts and then they feel like, okay, this is going beyond my, uh, you know, conception and, and things are getting complicated for them. So I'm gonna try to limit the information that I pass on. And labs, as I mentioned, will be discussing it towards the, uh, you know, once we have discussed uh, some of the basic concepts and and you know uh, the prerequisites or, or understanding uh, what actually firewall is right. So uh, I guess uh, let's start. So we'll 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 start with the very basic question: what firewall is. I hope my screen is visible. Uh, I have... oh. Thanks, guys. All right. So, the real question what firewall? Firewall. Sorry, one thing is What is a firewall? Right. So firewall, if you are a network security engineer, the simplest answer could be a firewall is uh Network security threats, right? So firewalls are used uh, in in corporate environments. Firewalls are used in your, uh, you know, maybe uh, there there might be a firewall in your laptop as well, right? If you're accessing it, this training to a laptop or or desktop, whatever, right? So there would be a firewall on your pen machine to protect. Uh, your, uh, you know, laptop or desktop or whatever piece of uh, machine you are accessing this board, okay? Uh, firewalls would be there in an enterprise to protect their network, uh, protect their uh, work that they're doing, right? So uh, let's say Google, for an example, right? So Google is developing their own software. They have a uh, lot of, uh, uh, you know, work going on over there, maybe related to Google Maps, maybe related to Google Images. There are tons of projects that they have. Now, imagine someone, uh, you know, with a malicious intent is able to access all of their data, right? What's going to happen? They're going to lose business. Google will be out of business because someone hacked the data and now... Uh, you know, there, there, are loss of, there, there is a loss of business. They, they cannot function anymore, right? So what Google will do, it will enforce certain security measures in the environment, okay? Now, this security measures, uh, there, there, there is a plethora, there is huge uh, number of security devices or equipments that a company or an enterprise can put in place to ensure that data is safe, okay? or their work is safe, or their project is safe. So I, I'm not gonna keep referring on data. 
uh, it could be anything, okay? But uh, but as we know, everything is data. Uh, but but for the sake of the simplicity, we are we're gonna talk in general terms uh, till we start the core of this training, okay? So uh, for the projects, right? Uh, for for the safeguard of their projects, for the safeguard of the work, for the code, whatever the codes are being written by the software developers, there will be a plethora of network uh, security devices or appliances or virtual devices would be placed in their environment to ensure that their uh, work is safe, okay? So you can imagine a firewall, uh, for example, let's say uh, this is a house, okay? Now, firewall would be similar to a boundary wall, okay? So a boundary wall generally is used to protect the house, right? Maybe from unauthorized access, right? So we have uh, we have a how uh, we have a door in the house, right? Right here, but at the same time we have a main gate, right? So this main gate would restrict the access of your hawkers, other vendors, you know, and and preventing them from uh, entering in, right? So similarly, a firewall will set a boundary, okay? Firewall will set a boundary where it will allow or deny the access. So if this is firewall, this will allow or deny the access to your what, okay? So this is what a uh, job of firewall is, okay? There could be a number of firewalls uh, uh, or, or different types of firewalls that you can see in an environment. Uh, some of them could be physical, right? Some of them could be virtual. Uh, so it, this is in terms of uh, their, if, if they're, you know, uh, the touch and feel, right? So where if you can, uh, see a firewall physically, you can touch the firewall, uh, then these firewalls will be a platform-based firewalls, right? We call it platform in the industry term. And if, if these are virtual uh, firewalls, then that means these firewalls have been deployed in maybe some sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, software, right? Uh, this software generally would be a virtualization software, okay? So, Examples of virtualization software could be like VMware or your uh, ESXi platforms, or it could be cloud, right? Maybe Azure, Google Cloud, Oracle. There are tons of virtualization software that one can use and then deploy these uh, firewalls, right? So this, this was in terms of touch and feel, uh, or, you know, in a, in a very general term. Apart from that, there could be uh, uh, you know variety of firewalls with respect to, for example, if you can call them as proxy firewalls, right? Uh, don't worry about the terminologies if you don't understand them. Just know that there is such thing that you know when when we discuss about these going down the line, you don't feel that okay, you have never heard of it, right? So we are not going to go what uh, into deep what proxy firewall is and all these things. Just this is for the understanding so that you become acquainted with this terminology, okay? There could be a proxy firewall. There could be a WAF, that is your web application firewall. Uh, there could be a, a, you know, perimeter firewall, right? So these things, I mean, there, there, are, there are tons tons of firewalls, okay? There are, there are tons of firewalls that you will see nowadays. There are like, uh, firewalls that are built in your endpoint, we call it as like endpoint protection firewalls. Right. So there are, there are a number of firewalls, uh, variety of firewalls from which you can choose or a company can choose based on the requirement and based on the implementation that they would like to have, okay? Uh, moving ahead, so this was about what, what firewalls are. Uh, generally firewalls, as I said, is a network security device that would be installed in a place to ensure that your work or your projects or your data is safe, right? It could be in a, in a corporate environment, it could be in a huge large enterprise, or it could be in a home environment as well, okay? Uh, 
now moving ahead uh we need to talk about i mean we need to discuss about uh, a, a a very important concept right so we are here to talk about uh palo alto firewalls right now palo alto firewalls palo alto network firewalls right now palo alto network firewalls are called as next generation firewalls right so before we understand what exactly next generation firewalls are we need to understand what a legacy firewall is okay because if we don't understand what legacy is then i i don't see how we can add value or how we can understand what next generation firewalls are okay so let's let's first try to understand what legacy firewall is uh legacy firewalls where in a in a simple english if i if i have to say these are the obsolete or these are the old firewalls okay i'll not use technical jargons to overwhelm the audience over here uh so old firewalls uh, as in these were the firewalls that were used uh in the beginning of the internet age uh these were uh again installed in the network environment right these this would be present in your uh network environment to protect your uh network safeguard right the huge difference is how these used to function right so earlier what used to happen is uh these firewalls were uh you know uh stateless okay we'll we'll discuss what stateless is again uh i might be ahead of myself but but we are going to come back to these points uh what stateless is what stateful is but for the sake of uh, complete you know uh, containing this discussion on the legacy firewall i'm going to give the the features of what exactly the legacy firewall is okay so these uh, uh firewalls were stateless okay these worked on packet filtering okay okay and there was no visibility or intelligence okay right so these firewalls uh, uh when we say stateless right so okay. the coming to the discussion of uh, stateless now imagine uh let's say uh you have you, you went to a pvr okay. and uh you took a ticket and you entered the premises good you uh there would be a guard right this guard is going to check your ticket and based on your ticket if you have a valid ticket for that particular uh we uh, will take the questions uh towards the end i i do understand you guys might have some questions we'll we'll uh take the questions uh towards the end so that you know we we don't disturb the flow of what we're discussing uh but yeah we'll we'll give you some time to you know put up your questions uh right so uh, uh let's say uh, uh you uh, there is a guard right that's going to check your ticket uh as to if you have a valid ticket or not and if you have the ticket for the same movie or not right so for example there is some xyz movie going on and you bought a ticket for xyz movie the guard is going to validate all that information in that ticket and then it will allow you to enter the pvr and watch the movie right and then if uh uh you know for example if you don't have the right ticket okay let's say you you have the the movie that is playing on is xyz and your ticket says abc okay in that case what will happen uh you would not be allowed to enter the pvr right you will simply be denied the entry okay at the same uh, at the same time for the return right let's say you you did uh, you went out and uh, uh you know bought 
some popcorn over here, okay? So let's say this is in the premises, okay? You went out and you bought some uh, popcorn over here. And then while entering, so there, there'll be multiple streams, right? While entering back, there would be a person who will be validating if you if you have uh, the say, uh, the right ticket or not, right? So so there is validation at every point. So your ticket will be verified at every point, and uh, even though uh, you have already entered, if you go back and if you need to come back in, you will be verified. Okay, your ticket will has uh, your ticket has to be verified. Okay. Similarly, in the concept of the firewall, if I say this is a legacy firewall, okay, and in this legacy firewall, let's say uh, you are allow allowing this particular traffic. Let's say this traffic is, uh, and I'm not going to go into the protocol and, and the port numbers and all that, all of that right now. Just, just for the simplicity, let's say there is a traffic going to maybe uh, this Windows machine. Okay. And uh, so you created a rule on this legacy firewall. We call it ACL. Okay. This ACL is nothing but access control. Okay. Now this access control list is allowing this traffic. Okay. And let's say it could be a simple traffic thing. Okay. I'm I'm pretty sure everybody must be aware of pain. So let's say this is a simple traffic of pain coming from uh, this device. Okay. and heading from the legacy firewall towards this window profile, right? And you created one ACL. There will be one rule, this ACL, to allow this particular traffic. Good. This traffic was allowed, no problem. This went very smooth. When the Windows machine is trying to reply to your ping, okay, so this was a ping request, this was a ping request, which was allowed by the ACL. And this is the ping reply, by your Windows machine, okay? Now, in order for this reply to go through your legacy firewall, there has to be another ACL, right? So there was the one ACL, first ACL, allow from, device to Windows machine, okay? Now we need a second ACL for the same reply. So there was a question asked, there is an answer that is going back. So for this, we need to create another ACL that will say allow from Windows to device, okay? So now you, you understand, right? For, for one communication to happen, for one transaction to happen, or, or uh, you know, in the simplest language, for uh, the communication to go through. So communication is generally between two people, right, or or two machines, right. So if the communication, if, if this is asking a question, there will be a reply, right. So in order for this communication to be successful, you need to specify two different rules that will allow uh, the traffic on either direction, right. The first direction towards the inward direction and the second direction would be towards your outward direction. So this this was one of the uh, the reason for this, okay? The, the reason why you need to create two different tools is because legacy firewalls were stateless, okay? Now coming to the point, what do you mean by stateless? Stateless means every network packet that is coming to this particular firewall will be treated as an individual packet, okay? This packet will be treated as an individual packet. Similarly, the reply that is going back will be treated as an individual packet. Right? That means it does not have a mechanism to understand that this was the thing request 
and this was your ping reply, right? Let me let me clear this uh, and and you know maybe simplify this. Let's start up again. The legacy firewalls. This is your device. And this is your post machine. Going in, reply. Okay. So, ping request. Ping request. Going in. And then this is your ping reply. So we discussed there will be ACL1 and ACL2 device to Windows machine and Windows machine to device. Okay. Uh, now why, uh, again, so we were talking about stateless. Why uh, this needs two rules? Because there is no mechanism for this firewall to understand that these two different packets are the part of the same communication, right? That this was the request and this was the reply. So this firewall cannot distinguish that, uh, distinguish between uh, uh, the communication. It will treat every packet as an individual packet. And then it would need a rule explicitly written to allow that particular packet, right? We, we are not talking about flow at this point in time. We are just talking about what a packet, uh, you know, uh, an individual packet, okay? So this is called a stateless, wherein there is no mechanism on the legacy firewall or old firewalls to understand if these two packets are the part of the same communication. It will treat every packet as an individual packet and there has to be a, a explicit rule or ACL written in order to allow that particular packet. Okay. Uh, the second point is uh, packet filtering. So this was your state less. Packet filtering. Now, what exactly we mean by packet filtering, okay? Now, we need to understand what exactly a packet is. So a packet is a layer three terminology. Uh, again, uh, we are, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, right? We, we expect you guys to have some basics of uh, networking so that these terminologies make sense to you. If none of this is making sense to you at this point in time, uh, please do not get overwhelmed. Uh, these things might take some time to sink in and eventually you'll be able to understand it. All I can say is uh, stay uh, throughout the session and try and try your best to understand it, right? It will take some time, but you, you will be there, okay? <laughs> so uh, packet filtering, Layer three terminology, right? Uh, if you talk about your uh, OSI layers, wherein you have seven layers, so the layer three, which is your network layer, will have something called as packet, right? So it takes uh, the segment from layer four and adds your layer three headers, and including that layer three header, this will become a packet. Okay. Now, packet when when we talk about packet filtering, it will have certain piece of information. Right. So it will have your source IP, destination IP. Okay. So this one is your layer three information. And uh, we will have something called as source port and destination port. This is generally we call it as a layer four information. And then we will have something 
Now these uh, packet filtering, right? Uh, the legacy firewall used to work on the principle of packet filtering. Now, when we say packet filtering, that means we can only work on either source IP, destination IP, source port, or destination port, right? That means we cannot go beyond their phone, right? So these devices. have visibility till layer four, okay? So source IP, destination IP, source code, destination code, this is what this particular legacy firewall can actually work on, right? Uh, even if th for those guys who have some experience or those, those who might have done their CCNA, you might be able to configure ACLs on a router, right? Uh, to define uh, TCP, right? And then you define the port number as 80 or 443 and you say allow or you say deny, right? So this is, this is exactly the same. Uh, we th This is also called as ACL in the router. So the, the behavior would be exactly the same, okay? So that's why we, these are legacy firewall, right? Old firewalls. So uh, these devices have visibility till layer four wherein you can define the ACLs You can define the ACL with either the source IP, and then you can have anything as destination IP. You can mention any destination, uh, even you can mention any as the destination IP, or you can specify a destination IP, right? And then you can filter uh, based on the ports, so source port and destination port. Now, a simple example could be, let's say, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, let's say your source IP for your Windows machine right now uh, is 192.168.1.4, okay? And the destination IP could be, let's say, 10.1.1.1. Source port, as we all know, source port generally is assigned uh, by your operating system, which is an ephemeral port. That means it could be any higher port number, right? So for this, let's say 65,000 for the sake of simplicity, okay? And destination port, let's say 80, okay? So we defined an ACL saying this traffic is allowed, okay? So if there is a packet coming in with source IP as 1.4 and a destination IP as 1.1, if Source port, so again, uh, defining a source port might not be a very good idea because as I mentioned, this is an ephemeral port. We can, but generally we don't. Reason being, uh, source ports are random based on all the machines, right? We can go ahead and define that, but again, that, that's not a really uh, good idea. Destination port is always, or most of the time on well-known ports, right? So some of the well-known ports, I guess, uh, worth mentioning is uh, web is 80, or, or, or we call it an HTTP protocol, right? And then 443 is your HTTPS protocol. Uh, 25 is your SMTP. And 22 is your SSH, right? These are some of the common port numbers that you'll see uh, around uh, in, in network, right? So uh, coming back, uh, so you, you defined an ACL that will allow this particular traffic, uh, but the real question is, uh, let's say I have, uh, you know, let's say there is something malicious. Okay. Uh, there is a piece of software that is there on your Windows machine uh, that is malicious in nature. Okay. And what it does is, you know, it, it uses this port 80, uses this port 80 and sends uh, malicious traffic. Okay. What does that mean? Port 80 is generally we expect it to be an HTTP traffic, okay? Uh, but this particular software is using the same port as port 80 and then sending some malicious traffic over to the, maybe some some malicious domain, right? So uh, uh, let's say it could be uh, any anything uh, XX 
dot x dot x, right? So this could be a particular destination where there is a uh, uh, some malicious uh, uh, command center that is being hosted, okay? And uh, this software is sending the traffic to this particular command center, okay? Now, because this ACL, uh, now let me give this as any for that matter, so that our actual discussion will come into the picture. Let's say you have not specified uh, the destination. You have not specified the destination. Instead of that destination, you have specified as any. Okay. And uh, this traffic is originating from your Windows machine on port 80, right? going out to this particular destination. What would happen? Right? This traffic would be allowed. Reason being, we are just looking till layer four. We are filtering the packet. We are we do not have any visibility onto this payload. Right? This payload is hidden from your legacy firewall. It it cannot uh, do any sort of uh, checks on what kind of traffic is going inside the packet itself. Okay. So that that was one of the major drawbacks. We'll we'll come to this point again when we'll be discussing the next generation firewall as to how uh, that particular challenge was taken care of by the next generation firewall, right? Uh, so this is one of the uh, biggest drawback when we talk about packet filtering. Uh, one or the other point. Uh, so lack of visibility and intelligence, right? So when we talk about the legacy firewall, we just, uh, uh, so if, if we talk about packet filtering, the packet filtering was still this part where it, it can have the visibility layer four and it can filter packet based on the ACL that has been defined to either allow the traffic or deny traffic. Now, when we talk about the visibility, we just discussed, right, that it does not have any visibility, lack of visibility, so it does not have any visibility, any visibility in the layer seven payload. Okay. So as for the OSI model, layer seven will be your application layer. And whatever data is being sent by your application, this legacy firewall does not have any clue as to what actually is there encapsulated, uh, encapsulated in that layer seven, right? All it can do is look into the headers. Again, headers are, are you know the piece of information that is added as the data moves from your top layer towards the bottom layer. Uh, so for layer four, it will add uh, you know, your uh, source port and destination port and other information. Uh, then for layer three, it will add source IP, destination IP. Uh, as you move down, there will be layer two that will add source MAC and destination MAC. Okay. So. Uh, there is no visibility when we talk about the uh, uh, legacy firewalls, and this is one of the biggest uh, drawback. Uh, what we discussed just now, uh, this is called as uh, application. Let me clarify what exactly uh, application tunneling is. Application tunneling is uh, wherein the ACL would filter based on the port number, right? A destination port number. It could be, let's say for that matter, uh, 53, right? And when we say 53, that would be ENS. So legacy firewall would assume that any traffic coming on port number 53 is going to be your DNS, right? But application tunneling, what it does is, it might be, uh, there might be any other application, let's say BigTorrent for that matter, okay? And BigTorrent, it smartly encapsulates its packet and changes the port number. So this will be, uh, it, it changes the port number, uh, source port, could be anything, destination port, and this is your payload, right? So this payload is BitTorrent. The source port is gonna be anything, but it smartly changes this destination port to 53. Okay. Because your uh, legacy firewalls are not smart enough. They will not be able to understand what is the payload. This traffic is going to be allowed. And this is called as application tunneling, wherein we are tunneling one particular application saying that this is something else. And then that particular traffic gets allowed because the original traffic is supposed to be allowed. Okay. And this is where uh, we say 
lack of visibility or there is no visibility in the environment, right? Uh, we are just simply allowing or denying the package based on the information present in their photos. We don't know the actual thing. Okay. So this was about uh, <clears throat> legacy firewalls. I, uh, I mean, they, we can go on the entire day on the legacy firewall discussion, but uh, that's not the agenda of this uh, bootcamp, right? So let's let's get to know what a next generation firewall means. Okay. So coming to uh, next generation firewalls. Okay, so the next generation firewall, the first and most important part is has visibility till layer four. Ah, sorry, layer seven, my bad. So it has visibility till layer seven, right? It can it can do an inspection uh, from layer two. Uh, so it can check all the parameters from layer two all the way till layer seven, okay? So, this gives us an edge as to understand what the actual traffic is going through the uh, inside the packet, and then we can subject it to inspection and then decide whether this is the actual application, uh, what it says, right? Uh, for example, the, the case that we just saw, uh, where in, in, in this case, in this case, right? Where uh, here, if we do an inspection on this payload, We'll get to know that this is a big torrent application. Right? So we will be able to get the visibility on the about the application based on the payload, not based on the destination port. Definitely, we are going to do an inspection. We're going to try to understand uh, what the ports are, but the most important in, uh, information would be there in the payload, and that's what is uh, that's what makes the firewall. Uh, you know, smart or, or I would say next generation firewall, right? So the visibility would be in layer seven, okay? That is, uh, 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 that covers uh, everything with the packet filtering. Legacy was a packet filtering device and next generation firewall is more of like application aware. So we call this as application aware firewall, okay? And, uh, uh, Apart from that, one more uh, uh, the, one of the most important features would be intelligence, right? Now, what do we mean by intelligence? Intelligence means these firewalls uh, nowadays are capable to give you uh, you know all the information, and they are also capable of uh, doing recommendations, right? So you will be able to see recommendations like. Uh, the, you know, there is one application that there is no rule created for that particular application. So they will make a uh, recommendation based on application. Okay. They will make a, uh, recommendations based on threat. Uh, how they are doing this? They are using AI machine learning, these technologies to come up with these recommendations, understand your traffic based on that. Uh, there will be recommendations to create or enforce new security rules in the environment that might you know, strengthen your security posture uh, of the network, okay? So next generation firewall, uh, these are some of the features uh, of your next generation firewall. Uh, I think uh, this is good enough for the introduction of next generation firewall. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah, one more important component that uh, we, we should discuss is uh, stateful, right? Or stateful. So we already discussed what stateless is, where every packet is treated as an individual packet by your uh, legacy firewall, wherein when it comes to the next generation firewall, stateful, wherein the, the firewall is able to understand. So again, I'll, I'll draw the same diagram. I mean, this is your device. This is your next generation firewall, okay? And this is your host machine for that. Same question, this again, okay? Now, when there is a packet that is going in, let's say ping, Request. This is a ping request, and then there is a reply that goes that will be a ping reply. Okay. Here in this next generation firewall, you don't have to create two ACLs. Okay. 
two ACL is not needed. What do we need? We just need one security policy. Okay. We'll talk about, I mean, what, what is the difference between uh, ACL and security policy and all that, you know, as, as the course progresses, I don't want to uh, get too much into the details because this is this is the notion, right? Uh, tons of information, uh, no matter how much deep I try to go, there will be still something left, right? So I'll, I'll not go too much into the uh, depth, what, uh, what is uh, security policy and all that right now. We'll, we'll discuss about these terminologies as we uh, get acquainted with the GUI and, and you know, get try to familiar, uh, familiarize ourselves with the lab and all that. Okay? So uh, it just needs one security policy, okay? Now, when I say it just needs one security policy, that means the ping request will be allowed by this security policy. At the same time, the reply is also be allowed, gonna be allowed by the same security policy. You don't need to go ahead and create a second ACL, right? So, or, or a second security rule to allow the return traffic. Now, how it does that? Uh, it does that based on something called as session. Okay. So it will create a session as soon as it receives a packet. Okay. And if that packet is allowed by this particular security policy, that is one of the most important criteria. If this traffic is allowed by this security policy, cool, let's go ahead and create a session. Now, what this session will have? This session will have information about those IP, destination IP, okay? And source port, destination port, okay? And protocol. There is one more information that I'm not going to talk about it. So there will be zones and all those. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, again as I said going forward, right? So these piece of information will be used to install a, a session on this particular firewall. Now, once this session is in place, it knows that there was a packet that was sent to this particular Windows machine. And when there is a packet coming back, what it will do, it will do a reverse match, okay? Reverse match in the sense, because now the source IP will be changed, right? Because the source IP will be the Windows machine and the destination IP will be this device. So it will do a reverse match. And based on that, if it sees there was a session that was installed in the first place from the uh, first, uh, when, when the first packet was seen, it will allow the return flow, okay? You don't need to go ahead and create a second uh, security policy to allow the return flow. I know this might seem a bit uh, uh, complex to some of the guys. Don't worry, we'll, we'll see all these details. Okay. So uh, again, now uh, there's one important point that I would like to add over here is, this does not mean that the return traffic is not inspected, okay? We are allowing it, okay? There is a security policy that will allow the flow, but at the same time, the packet will be subjected to the inspection, okay? wherein your layer seven inspection will happen and will determine if it does not, if it has anything malicious or not, if the packet does not have anything like virus or any such thing, uh, and, and the security policy is already allowing it, then the traffic will be allowed, okay? So this is what it means by stateful, wherein the firewall is aware about the communication, okay? The firewall understands that this is the host packet and there will be, communication that will be happening between this particular device and the Windows machine, and they are gonna exchange few packets. So you don't need to go ahead and create different ACLs to allow the same flow, right? Uh, or, or the same traffic, uh, or the packets of the same traffic, right? One security policy is good enough to take care of this. Okay. So uh, I think uh, th this is like fair discussion so far for your, uh, legacy firewalls, uh, next generation firewalls, stateless. Let's have a quick recap what we have discussed so far. Uh, we have discussed about uh, what a firewall is. Then we have discussed about, uh, you know, a bit of prereqs for the training uh, or, or the understanding of the firewall concepts, right? We have uh, discussed about uh, uh, legacy versus next generation firewalls, okay? And in this, we have discussed about uh, packet filtering. We have discussed about stateless versus stateful, okay? 
and we have discussed about visibility. Okay, good. So these are the things that we have discussed so far. Uh, this is just, uh, again, this is just an introduction. We can go deeper and deeper uh, in every individual aspect of it, but, but that's not the idea, okay? Uh, moving ahead, uh, there, there's something uh, that I want to discuss is, uh, uh, before I, I really get to uh, follow all this, right? Uh, there is a concept called as IPS. IDS, right? Most of you might have heard this IPS. Uh, so inclusion, prevention, systems, or inclusion, detection, system. Okay. So intrusion prevention system slash intrusion detection system. What what exactly we understand by uh, this, right? So intrusion prevention system, you know, it, it came into picture when we, uh, somewhere when, when the uh, legacy firewalls were still into the existence, what used to happen was legacy firewalls uh, used to do the packet filtering and then rest of the traffic that was allowed was allowed to go through an IPS or IDS, okay? So what IPS or IDS used to do, they had certain uh, signatures, right? Uh, so those signatures are nothing but but sort of the patterns which are already present. Uh, it is similar to nothing. Uh, it's similar to you have an antivirus on your system, right? That antivirus has a database. It always reach out to, uh, for example, if you have McAfee, it will reach out to the McAfee server. It will download the update all the time and have the updated uh, definitions of the virus or updated, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, database so that it will be able to scan the traffic and understand if there is a virus or not. So similarly, IPS was in the uh, environment. This IPS, uh, so uh, this, uh, okay, let me draw the diagram again. So we'll draw the same simplified diagram. Let's say, I'm not gonna name it a router, simply a device. Uh, let's say this is your legacy firewall still, okay? And then, there would be an IPS or IPS, and then your machine. Okay. So this legacy firewall was working on ACLs. It performed packet filtering, but to make an intelligent decision as to understand if there is actually any virus or not, right, or if there is anything malicious in that particular packet or not. IPS was introduced into the environment, right? IPS or IDS, right? So these intrusion prevention systems, what it used to do, whatever traffic was allowed by this legacy firewall was then passed through this IPS. These would have signatures or you can call them patterns, okay? Or in, in a very simplified way, it had a database, okay? This database, uh, whatever traffic was coming from legacy firewall towards this uh, Windows machine, for this example, uh, would be subjected to IPS IDS. That, that would be checked into this database and verified if, if this is malicious or not, okay? So it would, run, it would be inspected in a way, uh, run against the signatures or patterns. If there is a match, that means there is a virus or something is malicious, then that packet would be dropped. If uh, everything looked okay, then further, this packet will be allowed. The same goes for your return traffic. So this is what is your IPS or IDS. Now, the, the there was a minor difference between IPS and IDS systems. IPS were capable of preventing these threats, right? Uh, wherein IDS would just give you uh, an indication that there is threat, but it would not take an action. This would take an action, this would not take an action. No action would be taken. It would just give you invisibility, right? Uh, so this is a, a very small brief about IPS and IDS, okay? Now, let's talk what's so special about follow Alpha firewalls, okay? So, coming to the core of the topic, follow Alpha NCFWs, okay? 
what's so special about them? So, as mentioned, these are next generations. That means these are application aware. Okay, we call them app ID, application identification, right? These are, uh, you know, uh, these have, uh, uh, what can we say, uh, content uh, inspection, right? So this content inspection, uh, these have dedicated engines, okay? Dedicated engines for the content inspection. That would be your IPS, IPS, okay? Now, when in the olden times you used to have, uh, you know, separate devices for IPS, IDS, now this is already integrated into the firewall where you are doing application identification, you are doing IPS, IDS, and you, by default, you can always do packet filtering, right? So this is like, I, I mean, I would not say this is a feature of next generation firewall, but this is by default, uh, by default in nature, okay? By, uh, by default, we will be able to uh, allow or deny a packet based on till layer for information. These are the added advantages wherein you have visibility to till layer seven, uh, which is called as app IDs. You'll be able to run this against a, a application engine, okay? And you will have content inspection, Content inspection is again, there are dedicated engines where these packets will be uh, inspected against uh, certain signatures or databases. And, and based on that, uh, if there is anything spread or anything malicious, those packets will be dropped. Uh, packet filtering, again, as I said, this is by default where you can specify that this is the source IP, this is the destination IP, or this is the port that we'd like to drop. And based on that, we'll be able to allow a denied packet. Okay. Uh, most uh, important, uh, I mean, nowadays, the, the very crucial part is visibility. Okay. Now, what do you mean by visibility? Now, visib Palo Alto has uh, sort of like redefined visibility, wherein we have something called as, uh, you know, uh, uh, ACC, right? This is called as application command enter. Okay, now what this does is uh, this will give you a dashboard, right? A dashboard wherein you can go ahead and, uh, you know, maybe visualize network traffic. Okay, so when we say visualize network traffic, it will give you information about everything, where the traffic originating, uh, where, where your traffic is currently originating, where the traffic is headed to, from which country it originated, from which uh, to which country it's, it's headed to, uh, you know, the information about the endpoints, the information about the destination servers, everything related to the network traffic. You will have information about applications. So every application that you see in the environment that has travels this firewall will be visible uh, uh, in this ACC. You will be able to filter based on uh, a particular application and understand how many uh, sessions were there on this particular firewall for this particular application. You will be able to see threats. Okay. You'll be able to filter or customize the dashboard to understand what kind of threats are being seen in the environment. And then what was the action that was taken on that threat, right? So this visibility is very important when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, uh, implement the security in the environment, because nowadays you will see something called a zero day that for which there is no definition, but at least you need to visualize the traffic so that you will be able to understand how Palo Alto is able to take care of it. We'll, we'll discuss about zero day after that, uh, after uh, visibility. Okay. So threats, 
uh, you will be able to understand what is your threat landscape, what is your attack surface, what is uh, what kind of threats that you see in the environment, what was the action that was taken on that those threats. Okay, so uh, that's one uh, that's that about that. You will be able to see uh, certain other features, for example, uh, uh, you know, uh, failures or or the uh, information about system. Okay, I'll, I'll say it like this. Okay, information about system. When I say information about system, uh, it could be, uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, if there is a VPN, okay, uh, how many connections are there? Number of connections, okay, number of sessions, okay, uh, users, which users and user groups, okay. So you will be able to see all this information uh, at one place. That is uh, by creating custom dashboards under ACC. So this gives you a very robust visibility wherein you will be able to decide the next course of action based on this, uh, uh, you know, uh, application command center and, and the uh, data that you are able to visualize over there, right? Uh, uh, I think uh, these features uh, are, are good enough, okay? So, uh, all right, uh, we discussed about uh, the Palo Alto Firewall's basic features. Uh, but there's one more feature that, that you know, keeps, uh, that uh, makes it stand apart, that is the SP3 engine that you might be able to see, you know, whenever you do Google, you'll be able to see that uh, Palo Alto networks are, are really uh, commended for their SP3 engine, wherein we say this is single pass parallel processing. What do we mean by this single pass parallel processing is, uh, we don't have separate blades or separate, uh, you know, components in that particular device where you need to, uh, you know, send the traffic, for example, if this is my firewall, right? So everything is a, a, a stream based. Everything is stream based. It will go to the app ID. It will go to the content ID, right? And then it will go to other inspections, and then it will equal out, right? Everything this happens in single pass, okay? and everything is parallelly processed. This is this. Okay, everything is, there would be a parallel processing that will be happening over the traffic that you see, everything is uh, treated as a stream-based traffic. You don't have to go ahead and uh, install a separate uh, device or a separate component in this device that will be taking care of your, uh, you know, these features. Uh, you might be able to see there are vendors where you go ahead and install what we call it as blade, where you will have a separate blade for your filtering, separate blade for, uh, you know, uh, application detection, separate blade for maybe a threat detection, those kind of things, right? So uh, you might be able to see uh, uh, different blades, uh, maybe in different vendors, but in Palo Alto Networks, we have parallel processing. This highly improves the performance. Uh, you will not see latency. The latency is very less because the processing is done parallel, right? And single pass, we don't have to, you know, uh, pass it through multiple systems. It just goes to, it will come uh, through one of the interface and it will lead to one of the interfaces uh, of the same firewall. We are not going to pass it through a different component to subject it to, uh, uh, you know, maybe uh, those uh, inspections, right? Uh, and, and one last topic before we actually get acquainted to the GUI. And then we go ahead and see how the Palo Alto GUI looks is, uh, uh, I, I guess, uh, would be the zero loop. Okay. Uh, I would say this is the most uh, critical feature in any next generation firewall uh, nowadays, given the, uh, you know, how the cyber, uh, cyber security attacks are being engineered these days, right? So we need to, uh, uh, if there is, uh, because every day you, you will see on a daily basis, there are thousands of uh, attacks that are being designed, right? Thousands or uh, thousands of exploits that are being designed. 
Don't worry about these terminologies. Again, as I said, we'll, we'll discuss. But these threats, ransomware, these uh, malicious attacks, every day there 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 are a group of people who dedicate their time, their uh, you know knowledge to designing these threats to exploit, and these are the bad actors, you know, who try to gain access of the uh, organization and and you know hamper their performance or maybe uh, try to uh, extract uh, ransom or these kind of attacks, right? Now the issue is you cannot have a database, right? Uh, so if if we talk about a database, this database, uh, so today I created the database. This will be old by tomorrow, or or maybe in an hour as well, right? If I say given given the rate of uh, attacks being designed nowadays, I would say this database is going to go old in maybe one hour. Okay, so you cannot always have a database that is always updated with the uh, threads which are there, which are being designed. So what do we mean by zero day? Zero day means there is no database present. There is no signature yet defined by any vendor out there in the market. Okay, no one knows about this attack. Okay, it could be like uh, when when the WannaCry ransomware. I, I'm not sure if you guys have heard about it. WannaCry ransomware attack came into picture, right? There were so many enterprises that were impacted. There were so many individuals who were impacted. The reason for this impact was because they did not have uh, a signature. So even though they might have an antivirus installed, okay, even though some of the uh, firewalls might be in place, if, even if there are firewalls in place, right, they might not be able to stop this attack. Reason? This was designed today. None of the antivirus or none of the firewalls have uh, database updated or present in them that would be able to identify this attack right so in order to prevent these kind of attacks Palo Alto has something called as uh, a sandboxing environment in cloud or on prem as well which is known as wildfire I, I know I'm talking about a, a dedicated feature, uh, but this this was worth mentioning in, in one of the features for Palo Alto. Uh, so what it does is, uh, whenever there is a, a you know suspicious file that is being encountered by the firewall, it will send that firewall. Uh, it will send that file to the wildfire cloud. Okay? That wildfire cloud is nothing but a sandboxing environment. What that sandboxing environment is, it is an isolated environment wherein that particular file will be investigated and triggered. Okay. When we say triggered, uh, you know, maybe uh, sometimes you might be able to see that you double clicked on a file and, and then there your computer got encrypted because there was a virus that got triggered, right? So similar way, we can we can trigger that uh, over uh, that wild uh, sandboxing environment and uh, if it is found suspicious, uh, if it is found malicious, right? Wildfire is going to inform the firewall, okay, now this file is malicious, block it right away, okay? So even though we do not have uh, a database to stop zero day, zero day attacks, right? We are still able to do so by sending the traffic to the sandboxing environment, trying to trigger it and understand if it is malicious in nature. If it is malicious in nature, it will send the uh, uh, you know uh, information to the firewall, and the, that particular traffic will be blocked immediately. And at the same time, after some time, the wildfire is going to generate the signatures and will update its database. Okay. Now, now you can imagine why Palo Alto are the leaders and why this is such a uh, important feature because uh, you know the, the threat vectors are going to increase on a daily basis and zero day attacks will be more and more. So this is what a uh, uh, zero day attack is actually, right? And how Palo Alto is able to mitigate these zero day attacks. Okay. Cool. I think we, we discussed a, a, a lot today. I, I really didn't want it, you guys to be overwhelmed, but still I, I think I, I went with the flow and uh, uh, I, demonstrated, I explained too much maybe, right? But no worries. I, I think we are good with this explanation part. I'll I'll go ahead and uh, uh, give you guys or, or show you guys uh, 
you know, how the GUI looks, how you can access the lab, right? As, as discussed in the beginning that towards the end of the day, we'll, we'll uh, discuss about the lab environment and uh, uh, we'll just try to see uh, if we, you know, uh, we can access the GUI right now. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, So the lab is hosted, uh, uh, you can visit the URL lab.networking.in to access the lab, right? You need to install an application that is network key application that you can download from Play Store. Once you register with that application, you'll be able to access this uh, lab. Everyone who is registered for this uh, free, of course, bootcamp, right? Obviously we are not charging anything for this. So you will have access to uh, the labs for a period of hundred hours. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and see how this works. Okay. Uh, before before we jump into this, this platform is Eve uh, based platform, right? Eve NG, wherein uh, this is a virtualized platform. We'll be able to add multiple devices. I'll show you uh, uh, these topology, uh, how the topology looks that we are gonna go ahead and work upon. Okay. And uh, you. Once you are once you have registered with the application and you have your username password, right? The way it's being displayed, you can see my this is my username right here, and I enter my password, and this is the access code. Uh, below that, you'll be able to see something called as native console or browser console. Okay. Now uh, I'll, I'll take a minute to explain what exactly we mean by native control and browser control. Uh, some of you might be accessing your uh, this lab, maybe from a, a corporate laptop or some laptop that might have certain restrictions to install a piece of software, okay? When we use native console, that means in order to open those devices, in order to access those devices, you will need certain softwares installed on your machine, okay? That software could be uh, a PuTTY, it could be a VNC viewer, right? Uh, or, or any other uh, uh, SSH or uh, VNC access tools that you would like, okay? But uh, if you don't have uh, the permissions to install these tools in your machine, right? You can go ahead and use the browser console where is no app required. So this states clearly native console, VNC and be required and browser console, you do not need any app. You can go ahead and just click on that and it will open a new tab and you'll be able to access the console of that particular device, okay? So uh, based on your uh, preferences or based on your, uh, you know, uh, permissions that are there on the devices, you can go ahead and choose either of them. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and choose native console right now. I'm going to log into the uh, lab. Uh, you are going to see something like this, call all to bootcamp. Uh, you might be able to see different folders for me. Uh, uh, I'm being an admin, I'm, I'm able to access other folders. You guys, uh, when you enroll, you'll be able to see call all to bootcamp. And here you're gonna see uh, day one, day two, right? So let's go ahead and have a look at the topology for day one. So uh, I, I hope, uh, uh, I know, I mean, some of you guys might be uh, finding it difficult to understand this topology in the first day. Uh, take it easy, guys. You don't have to pressurize yourself. Just go with the flow. Uh, slowly, steadily, you will get there. Okay. So, uh, in this topology uh, that we're going to work upon, I have uh, tried to simulate a real time uh, enterprise environment, but in a very miniature form. Okay. Uh, because in, in the enterprise environment, you'll be able to see the LAN segment has thousands of switches, thousands of devices, depending on the size of the organization. And there will be code switches, there will be access switches, uh, and leaf and spine architecture and all that, right? So we have, we don't need that really just to understand the firewall. All we need to have is, a, you know, simulate a similar kind of behavior using these two devices. So this is my first LAN. Uh, we'll talk about these zones. Don't worry, in, in our next class, right? Right now, I'm just trying to explore, explain you guys the topology. Uh, this would be your LAN segment where I have placed two Windows machines. Uh, we have something called as management network. Uh, this, this is generally out of band management network where uh, the access is restricted so that everyone is not able to access the uh, you know management of your firewall, right? And uh, uh, 
Then we have something called as WAN. This is your ISP, okay? Uh, during the lab, you don't need to uh, touch this or this will be pre-configured for you. Uh, you don't need to worry about, uh, you know, uh, configuring the ISPs. We'll see how this goes uh, when we we'll start with the actual lab demonstrations. So this is where we have simulated the van where, uh, you know, uh, has been connected to the firewall for the input access, right? And then we have something called as DNZ, that is demilitarized zone, where literally uh, your public hosted services are, are placed, right? It could be a web server, it could be any other service that you'd like to host and would like to provide a public access at the same time in post technology. Okay. So this is how your topology is going to go ahead and look. Uh, as the day progresses, you will be, uh, uh, you know, uh, able to, uh, you know, you don't have to go ahead and configure everything from scratch as the day progresses. On, on day one, we are going to do certain configuration and then on the day two, you can start exactly from that point onwards. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to go to the day one and then, you know, configure the management and everything and, uh, uh, you know, work with that, right? So uh, this will help you save time. This will help you to uh, concentrate more on the specifics that you wanted to, uh, you know, configure at that particular point. okay? Uh, I think, uh, Access to the GUI, maybe we can we can take it tomorrow. Given the time, I think we have uh, it's just already ten thirty. I guess uh, I'll I'll stop this session here for today. Okay. Uh, if there are uh, and, and and the detailed instructions uh, how to access these labs and everything, uh, I think we can uh, uh, again I'll I'll share this so uh, the same on the. Uh, group as well, uh, wherein you can uh, you know, go ahead and access so the link. I have already given the information labs.tetrg.in, and then there is a Play Store app which is the good key. You need to download that in order to access these labs. However, there's nothing configured as of now. Uh, we will go ahead and uh, see the configurations, uh, the GUI. Given the time frame, I think we'll not be able to, uh, you know, even the GUI familiarization and even uh, introducing the zones and all those things might take some time. So I think we'll, we'll take it up tomorrow. And uh, I think that's it, uh, guys, for today, right? So uh, I think we still have five minutes. I think I can stop the recording and we can go ahead with uh,